Last week, Alpha 3.24 delivered more bug fixes to Evocati and is closer to being in a better state. But Wave 1 release is still nowhere to be seen. ISC released an incredible episode that showed off the visuals and gameplay of jump points. But there are a few glaring issues that some are concerned about. With Alpha 3.24 still having plenty of bugs in it, many are wondering if we're going to see 4.0 in Q3. At this point, we're nearing the fourth week of 3.24 being in the EPTU, and it's still having many issues. If you love to discuss the game's future and enjoy seeing all of the great sim gear and peripherals on the market, smash that like button and consider supporting the channel by clicking the subscribe button so you can stay informed. Welcome back to Last Week in the Verse. First up on Tuesday, the new patch had some improvements to the core tech. The development team made significant strides in making docking more robust. This enhancement ensures that docking is now more reliable and seamless. Whether you're docking at a space station or another ship, you can expect smoother operations and fewer complications, which will enhance the overall gameplay experience. Perhaps this means we'll finally have more reliable docking for ships like the 890 Jump, Hull C, Hammerhead, and many others. This is one bug that we've needed fixes for for quite some time now, and I'm glad that they're finally getting to it. Moving on, we have extensive bug fixes included in the patch. One of the most impactful fixes addresses an issue where Vulcan performance could degrade over time. This fix will allow your game to run smoothly and efficiently, and should result in a more consistent performance. Additionally, a bug causing players to be teleported away when entering the pad in their personal hangars was also resolved, preventing unexpected disruptions. The patch also fixes missing journal entries in the Moby Glass upon first spawning, ensuring that you have all of the information you need right from the start. We all know that there's often a delay with missions not showing up when we first get into a game, and this should hopefully fix the issue going forward. Several location-specific issues in the Stanton system have also been addressed. For instance, players can now keep the hangar that they are assigned at Evers Harbor both before and after landing, and problems with the external doors and the personal hangars not opening properly have also been fixed. Additionally, vehicles spawning under or clipped to freight elevators and noticeable transitions between different lods in freight elevators were resolved. The EMP activation issue with the RSI Scorpius Antares was also fixed, along with social channel issues, cargo hauling mission submission problems, and hangar assignment glitches. Notably, potential fixes for impounded ships and personal hangars not opening were also implemented. On the technical front, two client crashes and a server deadlock were fixed, ensuring a more stable and reliable gaming environment. On Wednesday, they had a minor gameplay update. The mission tagged cargo resale value was adjusted when sold outside the mission. This change should ensure that selling mission-specific cargo outside of its intended mission context will yield a more balanced and fair resale value. The adjustment aims to enhance the integrity and challenge of cargo missions, encouraging you to complete your missions as designed. Now, they also addressed numerous docking issues that persisted. Previously, docking or retrieving a ship at a station's docking port wouldn't extend the docking arm, which was supposedly fixed in this patch. This will hopefully resolve the many issues players have with docking procedures. Another critical fix that pertained to cargo hauling missions, where leaving a pickup location previously cleared all of your mission cargo from your instance staging hangar's warehouse inventory. This fix will supposedly guarantee that your mission cargo remains intact, preventing frustrating losses during cargo missions. We all know the pain of spending an hour on a mission, only to lose all of our progress near the end. Additionally, several fixes were implemented for personal hangars. Issues with storing ships and medium hangars at locations like Orison and New Babbage were resolved. Audio bugs where players could hear sounds from other players' hangars were also fixed. Moreover, the notorious bug that occasionally caused ships to be impounded upon landing in assigned hangars was also addressed. Various cargo hauling mission bugs were fixed, including incorrect mission markers and navigation issues when abandoning missions. Quantum travel routes plotted to planet-side locations should now work correctly, and delivered locations will display more accurately. Lastly, a fix ensured that players placed in medical elevators were properly sent to hospitals, and an issue with the kiosk display for nested containers was resolved. On the technical side, the patch includes fixes for one client crash and two server crashes. On Thursday, they delivered their third patch for the week, which increased the reward payouts for many hauling missions. This adjustment aims to make cargo hauling more lucrative and rewarding, reflecting the community's desire for more substantial mission incentives. Whether you're a seasoned hauler or new to the trade, this change promises to make your efforts in the verse more worthwhile.
Now, as for bug fixes, one crucial fix addressed the issue where cargo hauling missions were not granting reputation points. This fix will hopefully ensure that players will now correctly receive reputation boosts for completing these missions, which is essential for career progression and accessing higher tier jobs. Another fix resolved the difficulty in selecting floors on the elevator panel in the Grim Hex Clinic, enhancing navigational ease within the game. Additionally, a bug that caused the retrieve button to become grayed out on the fleet manager kiosk in personal hangars was also fixed, ensuring smoother ship retrieval operations. Several ship and vehicle bugs were also addressed. The prospector's mine laser gimbal, which was supposedly fixed previously, is now functioning correctly, allowing for proper targeting during mining operations. An issue causing the abundance of sound effects in the cockpit was resolved, restoring auditory feedback crucial for immersive gameplay. There's also a potential fix for missing elevator doors, which caused players to fall through the planet, a frustrating bug that should now be less frequent. While CIG continues to provide plenty of patches throughout the week, they still appear to be chasing down bugs, and many of the Evocati testers are stating that there are still many bugs that are causing a ton of issues. We still have yet to see Wave 1, which is unfortunate. I believe if they were to release it to Wave 1, it would begin to allow them to track down and fix bugs quickly. At this point, given that time is not on their side with releasing 4.0, this will probably be one of the patches they should use brute force and address as many bugs as possible in the 4.0 build. Now there was a tech preview test in the Yugakati build on Friday that utilized the current build from the 3.24 PTU, but it introduced a significant update, which was the replication message queuing network system. This new system is set to replace the existing NMQ system and is designed to be much more robust against networking bottlenecks. According to CIG, this improvement is a critical step in preparing for server meshing. Although server meshing wasn't enabled in the test, they focused on single shards that provided valuable insight and data for future developments. The successful implementation of the RMQ system is crucial for the overall stability and performance of Star Citizen when we move on to 4.0. This marks a major milestone in the game's evolution, and will hopefully resolve more of the server stability and performance issues that still plague each patch. Now unfortunately, I wasn't able to get any information on how this test went, so if you witnessed this test and have any feedback, please leave a comment below because I would love to know the results of the test. Inside Star Citizen delved into the mechanics and immersive experience of jump points. I found this episode particularly fascinating as it explores the intricate details that will shape our adventure across different star systems. Let's break down what I learned from this week's Inside Star Citizen. First off, jump points as we all know are the gateways that will allow us to travel between solar systems. These are separated into two types of jump points, permanent and transient. Permanent jump points are stable, always available, and well-trafficked routes that you'll find on the star map such as the ones between Stanton and Pyro. These jump points are large and can accommodate any size ship, and they have a built-up infrastructure to support the commerce flowing through them. I found it interesting that the team decided to move away from the concept of man-made jump gates to maintain the naturally occurring aesthetic they envisioned. While I love the design aspect of the jump gates, I'm not upset with their choice to remove them. Transient jump points, on the other hand, are more elusive, you will need to discover these points and their destinations are unknown until they are found. These points vary in size, restricting access to small, medium, and large ships, making them ideal for smaller vessels looking to sneak through unnoticed. The transient jump points add a layer of unpredictability and adventure, as they may only be usable once or for an uncertain period, offering a great way for players to bypass security and customs. Now, I did find it interesting that they decided to remove the size restriction going forward. It's a pretty big shift from their plans back in the day when they were going to have different sizes. But transient jump points will at least provide a shortcut to other solar systems that will be size restricted. The episode also gave us a sneak peek into the jump point experience coming into 4.0, specifically the jump point from Stanton to Pyro. The journey begins with setting a course on the star map and traveling to the gateway station to stock up on necessary supplies as Pyro might lack the amenities found in Stanton. Once prepared, you'll approach the jump point which appears as a pulsating star. The detailed description of the ambience and visual effects like the pull of gravity and gas clouds really paints a vivid picture of what we can expect. 
Navigating the jump point involves some interesting mechanics. Players must call the ATC to get permission to enter the jump point. This process includes attuning to the anomaly, which prevents you from getting too close unless you're authorized. This system ensures that multiple players can use the jump point simultaneously without chaos. While I appreciate the team's focus on creating a safe and immersive experience and providing security and turret infrastructure around permanent jump points, we all know that turrets and security are pretty worthless at the moment. I hope that they make them more dangerous so that criminals are prevented or discouraged from grieving other players near jump points. Furthermore, I'm a bit concerned with the queue system they've created with jump points. I feel as if this is going to cause a major bottleneck and prevent us from traveling to and from Pyro and Stanton quickly. I hope that they can find a solution for this as I think that it could cause a lot of issues. Some within the community went completely off the rails in regards to being forced to use the ATC to begin transit through the jump point, with them suggesting that CIG has no idea how to make a game. Honestly, I don't think that it's that much of an issue, and I hate this type of attitude. I'd be more concerned with how group travel is going to work, and if a massive force on the other end is going to prevent groups from safely exiting the jump point. Now once inside the jump tunnel, players will experience a unique, visually stunning environment. The tunnel is filled with ethereal particle effects, fog and light distortions, all contributing to the sense of traveling through a black hole, similar to watching Interstellar. Ships will move at a set speed, navigating around obstructions and avoiding the tunnel's edges to prevent damage. The technical and graphical efforts put into creating this experience are impressive, offering a sense of realism and danger as you traverse through the tunnel. Finally, the episode highlighted some of the challenges and potential issues with jump points, such as preventing players from blocking the gate or dealing with obstructions that can interrupt the attunement process. The team is considering various solutions to ensure smooth operations. Now I found it reassuring that they're actively working on these aspects to enhance the gameplay experience. However, they need to get this nailed down before they launch 4.0. Overall, this episode of Inside Star System provided a detailed look at the jump point mechanics, blending technical innovation with immersive storytelling. I can't wait to see and experience it firsthand as I really believe that it will be a very memorable one after I'd been waiting for nearly 12 years to get to this point. With three patches being delivered to the Evocati, with more bug fixes and further gameplay refinements for 3.24, CIG is hopefully beginning to get ready to release the patch to more waves as I believe it will be beneficial for them in order to track down more bugs. At this point, they should force the patch through to allow the team to work on fixing bugs as they're reported. That way, the other team responsible for 4.0 can release the new patch to the Evocati and they can get Pyro into a good state to be released before Q3 ends on October 1st. Inside Star Citizen delivered a really great episode that gave me a bit more excitement to see 4.0. While some in the community still doubt that they'll be able to release the next patch on time, Jared assured us that the team is working hard on 4.0 and that the patch is still on track to release on schedule. Obviously at this rate, we'll have to wait and see if they hit their deadline as it will be imperative at this point to prove that they can pull it off. If they don't, it will be yet another disappointment that will leave many of us in further doubt. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and let me know in the comments what you thought of jump points on ISC, as I would love to hear your thoughts. And if you're interested in seeing how Star Citizen could raise $1 billion by 2026, then check out this video. Fly safe pods, and we'll see you in the next video. Have a go.